Footy's been all my life. I actually live and dream footy. Uh, it started when I was five. The football was actually bigger than what I was. When you go and grab that footy and you, you start getting involved in a footy club, it brings you great mates. My name's Ron. I'm 49 years old and I have MND. Duncan used to be a keen swimmer and we would often swim together but he was much more enthusiastic than I and he was also quite particular about his technique and, and just one day he said to me that he, he was frustrated, he couldn't get his hand right so his, his hand kept kind of, one of the fingers kept curling, he couldn't get like a smooth clean shape, to me it felt a bit scary and I said you need to go to the doctor immediately. I think people are often uh, very, very shocked and, and traumatised by the diagnosis. I hadn't heard of motor neuron disease. Well, I probably had heard of it, but I wasn't too familiar with it. I didn't really know what it was. Duncan was just turned 30 at the time when he'd had his diagnosis. He was given two to four years prognosis, and um, obviously we've proved that wrong. He's proved that wrong, happily. Well, all he said was, he goes, You've got M and D. Um, it's about it's the 36 month one. He said didn't really think it was on my radar, um, but it's real. Yeah. M and D is a rapidly degenerative neurological disease, which then causes issues where people can't walk, they can't move, they can't speak. Modern neuron disease is one of the degenerative conditions of the nervous system. That occurs when certain cell types within the brain and the spinal cord start to deteriorate. We don't fully know the cause of motor neuron disease. It took a little while to really understand what, what MND was. You know, what is it, how does it work? What does it do to someone and how does it affect them? And of course, the, the people around them, what kind of support do they need? It's first and foremost a, a progressive disease. Uh, so as time goes by, people develop new symptoms, new levels of disability. It manifested over his, his whole body and over time he started to use different equipment. First a walker to help him be stable, um, then a wheelchair. He then moved on to a neck brace because the muscles in his neck were wasting away. It attacks your muscles and reduces your muscle capacity and makes everything weak. Motor neuron disease is still an uncommon disease. There's only about 2,000 people in Australia at any one time. It's a very small population, um, as, you, as you would appreciate, but the thing is that, that every day, two people are diagnosed with MND and two people die from MND, so it's quite a st static number. I was 48, fit as a fiddle, turned 49, and, and all of a sudden everything went backwards, so... There might be a cure for it, or one day it might happen, but right now I don't think there's a cure for it. Unfortunately, we we don't have a, a cure, and we don't have any drugs that substantially slow down the disease. However, there are lots of, of researchers globally working on better understanding the disease, developing effective treatments, and then hopefully from that, they will then come up with a, with a cure. And a researcher said to me a few years ago, he said, um, he, said a, he said, a cure is just around the corner. And, I, and, that, and that took me by surprise. He said, but it's a bloody big corner. And that's why it's really important for MND Australia to continue to support uh, researchers so that they can do their research the best that they can. The first year was probably the most emotional, not knowing what to expect, how it was going to change our lives. The one thing that we, we really decided on was to very much live in the moment, in the present, for us to appreciate what we have together right now, because the future's scary when you've got a prognosis of two to four years. If I had to say what word do, I remember most, you know, mostly coming out of the mouths of my patients. It's frustration. It's definitely a roller coaster. You have your good days and you have your bad days. To get ready, for example, it used to take five minutes, now it takes 45 minutes. 
it's a complex disease and, and, and a very tough nut to crack. I think we all agree on that. It's, it's not a simple answer. That's why it's going to take a lot of hard, a lot of hard work and iteration to, to chip away at this. MND Australia focuses on, on care, advocacy and research. We support the state associations in terms of their, their direct service delivery with people with, living with MND. Because MND is such a rapidly degenerative disease, we need to do everything possible to ensure that the, the person with MND is, is supported as, as best they can. We do absolutely incredible work, but we can't do it alone. And we need support for research and we need support for people living with MND. Without MND Victoria, without MND Australia, it would have been so much harder. We would have been fumbling around in the dark without them. They are very good at advocating strongly for the things that people will undoubtedly need. The technology that we have been introduced to through MND Victoria and MND Australia has really enabled Duncan to communicate, to email, to undertake his studies, enabling Duncan to live a, a good quality of life. MND Australia connects the state MND associations together, sharing knowledge and processes, so everyone in Australia living with MND can have access to high quality equipment and services. MND Australia also provides a unified voice to the federal government, which means we have better advocacy. That all provides the best quality of care for people throughout Australia. It's amazing to see people still value very much their, their lives and their quality of life under what, what seemed very difficult circumstances. I mean, we rem I think we, we do reminisce about our adventures together, about living in Amsterdam, about, about the travel that we did together. We tend not to look back because then you realise how much you've lost and you don't appreciate what you have. So I think that's the most important thing. With these diseases, you have the opportunity to go from the beginning right to the end with the patient and their family. We, we get to know uh, our patient as well. Uh, and you see a lot of, of, of human nature and human kindness along the way, I have to tell you. I know myself personally, um, I'm just taking whatever comes because I'm living my life every day and I just think it's a bonus that every day I wake up, I'm breathing. So whilst I've got that ability to stand up or sit in a car or go somewhere, I'm gonna take it.